2022 is in the books. But there was a lot of games that we all played or were surprised by. And I asked a couple buddies to help me out with this collab and what was their favorite game or a game that surprised them for that year. And you know what? I got back some amazing videos. So we're going to sit back, relax, and enjoy the beautiful bean footage <laughs> of everybody. And we're going to find out what their favorite game or surprise game of 2022 is. Let's start off with Aldo. Hey there, Linda. Aldo here. And thank you so much for allowing me to talk about my favorite game that I completed this year. And instead of talking about a game that was released in 2022, I would actually like to go back to 1997 and talk about a game, Brock, Legend of the Gabos. This is a game that I recently completed on a video game stream I do for my work. And this is a game that when I was younger, I would rent it at Blockbuster and I would never get to the end of the game. I would maybe get a few worlds in and that was it. And it kind of got lost in the shuffle of my youth and uh, you know, always haunted me that I never beat it. But luckily, thanks to this fantastic uh, free fan mod on PC called Croc Definitive Edition, I was able to download it on a modern computer and play it with uh, analog controls and a whole bunch of visual options. So it's basically the, the most refined way to play it these days. So it was really fun. Uh, this is a simple game. You know, this came out in PlayStation 1, Sega Saturn, and PC, and it's, you know, early 3D, so it's rough. You know, the camera is not the best. Hitboxes are pretty wonky, but even so, with those working against you, the game is filled to the brim with charm, character, it is adorable, and it's a doorway into a simpler time of gaming when you didn't have to shell out 300 hours to complete a game. Uh, you know, again, it, it can take a little bit of time to get through all the worlds, but even just getting through the first couple stages is, is nice and simple. Um, it's a casual game. I don't think you'll ever feel stressed out unless you decide to go for 100% completion, but even so, it's a fantastic game, and it's a wonderful window into that era of gaming when every company and their grandma was trying to create a mascot character to try to make their own Sonic, make their own Mario. Um, and again, a lot of these characters kind of got lost in time. But Croc is a fantastic game, early 3D platformer, but it's tons of fun. It's cute. It's a great thing to play with. A, a nephew or a cousin, a younger child, just good stuff. So, highly recommended. Again, you can get it on PlayStation 1, Saturn, PC. On PC, you can get the Definitive Edition. Just look it up. You can find it for free. And yeah, fantastic game. I'm so happy I was able to uh, revisit it and complete it and add it to the list of games that I've been able to beat. So, yeah. Thank you so much for letting me talk about Croc, Legend of the Gabos. Let's get a remaster for 2023, hopefully. And wonderful. Have a happy, happy new year. May 2023 be nothing but the best. And may it bring everything you hope for and more. And yeah, happy new year. Take care. And I will catch you later. Thank you. Okay. Cannot go wrong with a classic for the PS1. I kid you not, PS1 is the way to go. Am I right? Am I right? Okay. Now, hmm, Super Jeff, what was your favorite game? Linda, thank you for having me. And I want to say it's been so, such a great honor to have me on as your, uh, spe as a play uh, as your uh, special guest. I don't know. I'm trying to hold it in. Anyway. What I'm trying to say here is that I, for 2022, I beat Shredder's Revenge, which was one of the great games I enjoyed last year. And I really enjoyed the beat em up. It was so fun. I really enjoyed the heck out of that game. I would love to play more of that sometime in the future. But anyway, thank you, Linda. Hope you had, glad you have me as your collab guest. See you next time. Classic TMNT hype. New game. Throwing it all in the mix. 
You picked an awesome game, my friend. Awesome game. So, hmm. Ingeniuses, what was your favorite game? Hello, social media navigators. Hey, listen. The game that surprised me the most in 2022 is Horizon Zero Dawn. What? Yes, you may be asking, Zero Dawn or Forbidden West? Yes, Horizon Zero Dawn, the first game. I know it's not a game from 2022, but I believe this game does not get as much love as it deserves because of the bad timing of releasing just a couple days before The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild back in 2017. Horizon Zero Dawn is the game that surprised me the most in 2022 because I just finished dead back in December 2022. I didn't pick up Horizon Zero Dawn until a couple years later and it took me a couple more years to complete. I would just step on and off the game since then because as a newcomer to the series, it is a challenging game to adapt to. Understanding how the skill tree works in combination with the character and weapon upgrades, learning how to craft certain weapons and suit armors with modifications to make the best out of your enemy combat and boss battles sure was something that took me a while and probably a bit longer than it should have. But in my defense, that was all without consulting a guide or tutorial videos. It was not until I was almost halfway into the game when I figured all of this out. Whether this is a good thing or a bad thing about the game, not really telling you or precisely holding your hand to help you progress in the game in the most fluent manner, could be very subjective from person to person. For me, that's exactly where Horizon Zero Dawn stands out aside from the great storytelling. Horizon Zero Dawn is an open exploration game but not just any other open exploration game. It takes place on a post-apocalyptic era. It borrows elements from many other open exploration games and RPGs, but it's the game mechanics, the visuals and music score that makes Horizon Zero Dawn a unique game. Not only just a unique game, but being the first from the developer Guerrilla Games, this first installment sure is an originality. Like I mentioned a second ago, the story definitely was the first thing that enthralled me right from the prologue. I gotta say this much, this has been and is the only game where I deliberately wanted to hunt and look for side missions and other errands to do that weren't part of the main quest. Why? Because they turned out to be, for the most part, quite interesting. I didn't find the side quest to be as annoying as other games where I pretty much kind of had to force myself to complete just to try to get as close as to 100% completion as it was in the case, just to name a few games, the Zelda games, Assassin's Creed games, the Witcher series, Metal Gear, among others where I found some of the side missions to be straight out uh, stupid. This was not the case for Horizon Zero Dawn. In the contrary, some of the side missions tied to the main quest in some way, shape or form. Although you were not required to complete such side missions in order to understand the whole story. I reiterate, in my case, I found them somewhat amusing. Horizon Zero Dawn accomplished something that not very many games are able to do. And that is the roller coaster of emotions it put me through. It made me laugh, it made me angry, it made me tear. Not literally, but emotionally. It made my jaw drop to the floor in awe a couple of times, and it made my heart skip a beat a few times as well. The writing overall was just remarkable. I couldn't possibly describe or express thoroughly on this tiny segment what of a great game Horizon Zero Dawn is. It is just a straight out fantastic superb game. And I wish I could give myself in the near future some time to give a very thorough review on Horizon Zero Dawn to share the reasons why you should give this game a chance if you haven't done so already. <laughs> Unfortunately, I still haven't been able to score myself a PS5 
to play the sequel Horizon Forbidden West. But sure am looking forward to it whenever that comes around. And until next time, game on, have fun, take care of one another, I'll see you soon. Let the chanclas rain. Okay, going with the PlayStation staple. I, I, I dig it. I dig it. Okay, I, I can see where you're going with that. Okay, okay. Hmm. One Up Woman, let me know what was your favorite game. Hey everyone, it's One Up Woman here. And when Linda the Gamer Gale asked me what game I beat in 2022, I was exposed. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine. That's when I realized I haven't beaten a single game last year. What? That's a shame! I know, I know what it was from. That is a shame. You got that right! But she also said I can talk about a game that surprised me, and that's when I noticed I only purchased one game last year. A game from my favorite console of all time. That's right, an N64 game. It's a blue cartridge. You probably already know what it is. 007, the world is not enough. So I've been avoiding this game for years because I am a huge GoldenEye 007 fan and I'm like, if you don't have GoldenEye in the name, you're not a 007 game. That's how I used to feel, honestly. So I would go see the game at the store, never buy it, you know, growing up. And I was like, nope, this is not the one. This game probably doesn't have multiplayer. This game probably, you know, doesn't have anything good about it. I don't care. It's not golden eye. Forget it. That's just how it was. The reason I decided to give this one a shot is because I was like, you know what? I remember when I made my 007 700 like golden eye uh, tribute video and Mata Master commented and said that he liked the, uh, the world is not enough better than golden eye. And I was like, hmm, that's interesting. So let me check it out one day. I told him I'll, you know, I'll get it one day. So I looked at some videos of people playing and I said, oh, it does have a multiplayer. And I was like, hmm, this looks interesting. I might just give it a buy. I didn't watch too much of it, but I was like, let me, let me buy this game. So I found it on eBay and the day finally came last year <laughs> in 2022. So I went ahead and bought it. The only thing is I didn't even play it until January. But you bought it in November, how could you? I know one up Mushroom, I know, that's a shame. But it still surprised me in 2022. Whatever. Like a normal gamer, you thought I probably played the first level first, right? No, I decided to go straight to multiplayer. It's just me, so I thought I had to put in other controllers, but you can pick AI to play against on here. And I thought that was the coolest thing. I got shot by some bots, but <laughs> it was still fun to play. Good afternoon, sir. Can I help you? The name's Bond. James Bond. When I played the actual game, I was like, what? They're talking? There's no, like, just reading words on the screen? I was like, okay, that was a nice touch. Then I was like, you can punch people on here? I remember slapping people on GoldenEye, but I was like, okay, I like the punching. This is cool, too. If y'all know me, y'all know I'm always trying to do something out of the box, like trying to walk out of this rotating door that's not going to let me leave until I complete the mission. But no, I just kept trying it, even though I knew it wasn't going to work. So yeah, overall, I think it's a pretty great game. It definitely surprised me in 2022. I was like, you know, really avoiding this one, but I'm glad I finally gave it a chance. I haven't beaten it yet. Um, I'm really, you know, enjoying that multiplayer mode and stuff, being able to play multiplayer without having actual people with you. You can play against the AIs. I thought that was pretty cool, man. And, uh, you know, I look forward to seeing which, what more this one has. I still think GoldenEye is number one, and that's my favorite. I love the soundtrack of that game. I love the memories. Like, it's just, you know, nothing can touch my GoldenEye, but this... This is pretty cool. I'm going to be playing some more of this for sure. Um, it definitely deserves, you know, a little more credit than it does get. So, yeah, it's pretty cool. Thanks. I am so sorry, one, one woman. I'm so sorry. I didn't. Okay, Um, we're just going to go straight to the next video. Mazin, take it away. Hey, what's up, guys? Mazin Power here. 
I was asked by Linda to talk about a game that I beat in 2022 that was my favorite. Um, it took me a while to think one because I mostly stream retro games, but finally I think I have an answer, and that game is Super Cyborg for modern consoles and PC. I remember watching Mega Man 29 and Alpha Earth Entertainment playing this game a while ago. They have a lot of fun with it and recommend to everyone to play this game. Sometime later I decided to buy the game and after playing I was like holy corn, this game is good, really good and I understand why they want us to play this game. After beating the game I was really happy, I remember a lot of the Contra games and I think maybe beating on hard will give me something else. So I beat the game on hard and I was like, mm, maybe I should do the no death run, I think it's possible. So I started talking with Alphonert and he was like, dude, better do a speedrun. I'm pretty sure you can do a speedrun. I have like the fifth place on speedruns.org and like, okay, but I'm more like a no death runner. So honestly, I don't care a lot about uh, doing a speedrun, but we'll see. The game screams action, real action, like man. It has a good variety of levels, great music, the weapon selection is pretty good, you can save your game anytime so you don't have to start over, that's a pretty cool feature for new players, you can win extra lives, unlimited continues, and a lot of good stuff that you enjoy if you play retro games. You will enjoy this game as much as I am. Well, I enjoy it too much that I'm currently the world record holder of this game on speedruns.com. And as you can see guys, this game is pumping up my body too much that I want action, so I'm gonna grab my gun. Um, size doesn't matter, it's the damage that you can do about it. <laughs> and I will play more Super Cyborg, and I hope guys you can check it out. Until then, Mass Power is out. Bye bye! Huh. Camouflage! Can't with you, Mazen. Okay. <laughs> lotes. You gotta cut back on the lotes. Too many. Too many. I didn't know we were going to a gun show, but apparently we were. So <laughs> we're gonna go straight into the next video because I need to stop. I need to breathe. <laughs> and the next video is VG Legends. Hi, VG Legends here. That's James with Video Gamers Legends. Now, thank you, Linda, for adding me to this collab and giving my thoughts on. What game surprised me in 2022? What game did I love to play the most that I beat? And uh, a lot of people would say Elden Ring. It's an easy pick, game of the year. I would have said God of War Ragnarok, but I technically didn't beat it in 2022. I did a long stream the first week of January 2023, and I beat it. So I'm going to go on a limb here. I'm going to say Ease 3 on the Super Nintendo. Now, I had... Heard of the E series, but I had never played the E's games. I want to give a shout out to Joel from Media Glitch for um, getting these, <laughs> letting me be introduced to this series. And I started with E's three, which is not a fan favorite. This is not a fan favorite. It's actually hated by a lot of E's fans. It's the only side scrolling, the lone side scrolling game in the series, and that's why I think it's not liked as well as the other games. And it's very challenging. Um, but it's a lot of fun, and I loved it. I can't speak for the previous two games. They were made for the second Master System in various PCs, but um, those were not side-scrolling, but those are beloved by many fans. Now, Ease 3, you play as Adol, and you're with your friend Doshi, and you're Wanderers of Ease. So basically, it's an action RPG, side-scrolling, kind of like Zelda 2, actually, but far better than that game. And... You go to Doshi's hometown, his home country, and you are you talk to this girl, Elena, and she says her brother is working with this evil um, emperor, this evil person who's actually wreaking havoc on the land. So all these monsters, he's waking up all these monsters. So you as Adol, with your abilities, your various abilities, upgrading your army, like 
armor, like any action RPG. Um, you have rings, so you have different various magic abilities, potions, and various things of that nature. And you side-scroll through the levels, and you actually have to beat all these monster bosses till you get to the end and beat the 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 main the main boss so it's awesome when i beat this game i was actually very impressed i like it a lot but remember this is i'm very biased here because this is the very first game i played in the series now you do have to grind i remember joel telling me at the beginning of the game uh at the first section you have to fight all these bugs and it got very boring over and over and over again because you got to get your hit points up but once you do that i was primed to play the rest of the game and it became a lot easier for me now the boss battles can be very challenging but once you learn their move sets it's it's it was a lot more easier for me so i had a lot of fun playing this game oh it was awesome and the music, the music is absolutely incredi incredible. As you can hear from the video footage here, the music is incredible. And what I love about it the most is it introduced me and got me hyped on a lot of the other um, variants, a lot of the other games on the PS Vita, actually, because it's one of my favorite fa handhelds of all time. We have Ease, um, from the video footage here, you can see we have Ease Cell Kita, or Celsita, which is actually a remake of Ease 4, Ease Origins here, and Ease 8, which is one of the installments in the series that is beloved by many fans, probably one of the best games as seen in the Ease series. And also Ease 9 came out on various platforms just um, recently, and uh, like PS5 and all other platforms, and they're talking about Ease 10 too as well, so it's, it's a, it's a, series that is loved by many people and it's an ongoing series and the music like i said before is fantastic in every single game it just seems to get better and better i actually played ease origins i'm right at the end of that game but i haven't beat it yet but i love that game now that game's not side scrolling but that's a great action rpg as well with a lot of the various same characters can't wait to play the other ones and yeah ease 3 was my pick so yeah that's that's the game that surprised me in 2022 back to you linda Okay, okay. Another classic staple. We, we are, I see where we're going with everything. Classics all the way around. But, hmm, Dizzy, what was your favorite game? Hello out there. Hello, Linda. I'd like to talk about my favorite game I beat last year of 2022. Surprisingly, not a GTA game. Now, my favorite a uh, game of last year was actually a PS1 game. One that I don't hear anything ever good about. Uh, but I've loved this game since I was about 9 years old. It's The Incredible Hulk, The Pantheon Saga for PS1 and Sega Saturn. Now, I did die plenty of times while playing this game. And this is the hard ass level right here about 25 years if not more oh snap damn it oh man I feel like my freaking hands are sweating on this one man which gave me pretty much plenty of time to learn the controls and the mechanics of this game so there's plenty of replay value in this one this game definitely is not the best Marvel game, especially for the PS1. Now, I haven't played this game since the late 1900s, but once I played it again, I loved beating up robots and flying UFOs for some reason. And the boss fights for a Marvel villain you never heard of comes out to fight. Alright, let me take out Hector real quick. I mean, you can't really bust up anything in the game either. Besides like one wooden crate. Which isn't what we wanted. We wanted a game where the, where the Hulk can just bust everything up, break everything apart. And we did not get that with this game. Um, so it's not that expensive. 
Uh, finally, I, I called this Dizzy special at the very bottom uh, nice. because, yeah, because he recommended if you listen to that podcast, you know, you said really great things about the Pantheon Saga, and actually, that was the cheapest game to pick up. It's, it's <laughs> you know, a bargain. Enjoy it. Yeah, a bargain there, twelve dollars. So, if you're able to snatch it up for a real low price, and once I actually beat this game on stream, I was just so happy to complete it in 2022. So, again, my game is. The Incredible Hulk Pantheon Saga for PS1. YouTube Mafia. Okay, I see a pattern. PlayStation is in the books for a lot of people. Well, yeah, okay, okay. I think we have covered everybody's videos. Oh, wait, my video. You all want to know what my favorite game was. And that was Tales of Iron. Shocker, I know, right? Well, Tales of Iron was a win for me, a 10 out of 10. It's an RPG light, Metroidvania light, platformer light, and basically a hack and slash all in one. A game where you have side quests, you have very, very awesome storylines of side quests mixed with main stories, meshed into one, where you are a young prince and you see that your kingdom has fallen to the frogs. Your father has perished, who is the king, and your brothers have been kidnapped. You have to go save your family's legacy and the remaining family members that are alive. You have to take everything you have, just a sword and a shield, and go out and fight and get everything back. You must protect your family, your friends, and all of the people that are in your kingdom. You go and you have to do what you gotta do. You collect stuff along the way, and you use it, and you pick and choose what you want. I loved this little game. Oddbug did a great job because of the fact that every minute I could not put it down. You are always looking for new things to find. I have played a lot of Metroidvanias. I have played a lot of games where I just got bored after a while. I just stopped playing, but this one I didn't stop. I kept going, I figured out what I needed to do, and I figured out how to save my brother. I figured out how to get everything ready. And I played the little DLC at the very end. It was a 10 out of 10 for me. And this is my game of the year. Let's give everybody a round of applause for making us laugh, for picking awesome games, for showing us some really fun games that, hey, we might all want to try out. Let me know in the comments below, what was your favorite game of 2022? Also, the people that were in the collab, I'm going to drop their links in the description and tag them in the comments. So please, Show them some love. Check out a couple of their videos. And if you like their content, give them a sub. Can't hurt, right? It's free. <laughs> and I want to thank everybody for chilling with us, having a fun time. And I got six pack abs. Elotes! Fight it out. Food fight! And I'll catch you all next time. Bye, everybody. Linda the real deal, gamer gal, give her the crown right now, she's royale. PC, PlayStation, Xbox, her chest list stream definitely rock. Nintendo Switch way back to arcades. Jump on the Oregon Trail and join the raid. Dungeons and Dragons, reviews and interviews. This gaming channel puts you in a good mood. She's making great content like all her funny skits. Homegirl shopping network and the gamer girl kit. Raspberry Pi to OG hardware. Linda's playing games everywhere. Linda the Gamer Gal She's here, she's playing games Linda the Gamer Gal She's here, she's playing